Wow, it was hot today. I mean, so hot today. Hace calor. Candles are melted without fire. It's too damn hot for a penguin to be just walking around here. And now the story of a mediocre artist who broke his toe and all the things he made when he was stuck at home. It's a restful development. Hey there, and welcome to a very special restful development. Science edition. Last week I saw this really awesome video by Joe Hansen over at It's Okay to Be Smart where he talked about the solar system in more relatable terms. And it really blew my mind in terms of how far apart the objects in our solar system are and how much empty space there is. Okay, I guess it's not like totally empty space, but how small all of our planets are in relation to everything else. So for this video, I thought I would recreate the solar system to the scale of the city of New York, specifically the island of Manhattan. So let's do this! To start, Joe had posted some really awesome links where you could enter measurements into this really awesome scaled ratio calculator and it would give you everything you would need to know to put something like this together. It took a little bit of tweaking with the numbers, but once you got these measurements down, it was a piece of cake. Mmm, cake. Check out this website, it's definitely worth playing around with. So we begin with the sun. You know, that mass of incandescent gas. or plasma, or whatever. And for our solar system model, we're going to use this really cool sculpture by Fritz Koenig called the Sphere. The sculpture is really beautiful. It used to be located at the base of the World Trade Center, but after the 9-11 attacks, it got dug out of the rubble and then relocated to Battery Park, which is where it currently resides. However, as I found out today, Battery Park is currently under construction. Behold, the sun. So if we keep to about the same size ratio as the sphere sculpture, the first planet would be Mercury, and that would be located right across the street in Bowling Green. Additionally, Mercury would be about the size of a dime. That's incredibly small. Our next planet, Venus, would be just a block or two up the road at the corner of Exchange Place and Broadway. At this scale, Venus would be about the same size as the top of a bottle of aspirin. Next we've got Earth, that awesome little blue dot that we like to call home. Earth would be located just a block or so away from Venus, right at the corner actually of Wall Street and Broadway, kind of near Trinity Church. And that's just one subway stop away from Mercury. Earth is just slightly larger than Venus, so at this scale it would be just a little bit bigger than our bottle of aspirin. Our next planet is Mars, which would be located several blocks north of Wall Street at the corner of Cortland and Broadway. Mars is significantly smaller than Earth, and to this scale, Mars would only be the size of a quarter. For our next stop, Jupiter, we're going to have to get on the subway and head up to Soho. So right at the corner of Prince Street and Broadway, Jupiter would be hanging out in Soho probably on its way to Uniqlo to get some heat tech leggings, you know, drinking an iced espresso, hanging out with all the other Europeans. Additionally, Jupiter would be about the size of a sombrero. Despite being the fifth in line of our eight planets, Jupiter's distance from the sun is only about 15% of the total size of our solar system. Next up, we've got Saturn, which would be hanging out around midtown Manhattan, right about at 27th Street. And to this scale of our solar system, Saturn would be about the size of this AM New York logo, or you could compare it to about the size of a bandana. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Doesn't matter what color. 27th Street, this is also where I choose to take a break from the sweltering heat of the day. <sighs> we hop on the subway again. This time we head really far uptown for our next planet, Uranus. Which, of course, you could pronounce your anus. Where I grew up, I learned that the name of the seventh planet is pronounced Uranus. But in the effort of staying semi-professional with this, we're going to go with Uranus. Uranus would be located right around 91st Street, right at the base of the Eldorado. To the scale, it would be about the size of a circular to-go container. 
My next stop is Neptune, which would be all the way up in Washington Heights, about 161st Street. When I got off the subway here, I saw that people were definitely doing something about the heat wave today. Look at that shit. It looks like crazy fun, right? Apparently it's really easy to get one of those keys to open up a fire hydrant. You just have to go to the fire department and they give you one. Neptune may be an ice giant, but it's hot as shit up here. Even the pigeons are dying. Dead pigeon. Anyways, back to Neptune. Neptune is about the same size as Uranus, and it would be around the size of the bottom of the to-go container. Here it is in Meyer Square. Also, taking a look at our solar system map of Manhattan, we are almost at the end of this island, and as such, almost at the end of our solar system. Which is what brings us to our final destination, the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt would be at the northern edge of Manhattan, right around Inwood Hill Park. Since this was my last stop, I decided to wander around the park a little bit, and I saw a number of really awesome things. I saw a beautiful little butterfly. I saw a goofy street sign. I saw another dead pigeon. I saw a little plant that needed some water. And I saw my favorite piece of street art this week. Ah. Getting back to the Kuiper Belt, though. This is where dwarf planets like Pluto and Eris are hanging out with their crazy ass long orbits that take like 250 years to go around the sun. 250 years, that's about the lifespan of an average oak tree. Keeping with the same scale of the sphere sculpture being our sun, Pluto would only be about the diameter of a cigarette. But I don't smoke cigarettes, so let's just say it would be about the diameter of a triple A battery. Much better. And believe it or not, the Kuiper Belt would actually extend way beyond this little creek at the very top of Manhattan. It would go all the way past the Bronx, past those projects right over there. It's been an amazing adventure today. I got to see a whole bunch of different neighborhoods in New York City, work out the toe just a little bit, and it feels okay. But for now, I think I'm going to head back to Brooklyn and enjoy some good old fashioned air conditioning because it is sweltering outside here. Thanks for watching and a big thank you to It's Okay To Be Smart for posting such amazing resources on their page. I couldn't have done this without you guys. Great kid, don't get cocky. <sighs> I think Jupiter would look good in heat tech leggings. You know, a little bit of junk in the trunk right there. Jupiter is a gas giant. Put up,